Secretary Jeremy Hunt, who's in Westminster. Good morning to you, Mr Hunt. £8 billion pounds a year by 2020. Labour says you've, this is completely unfunded. Um, well, it's not, and uh, we have confidence that we can fund it because uh, we have a strong economy uh, which is creating a thousand jobs every single day. Every one of those jobs is generating tax revenues. Uh, the companies that are being set up every day are also generating tax revenues. Um, but let's be clear why this is so important. This is a very, very big moment for the NHS. By the end of the next parliament, we'll have a million more over 70s. And Conservatives want to make sure that every single one of them is treated with dignity, respect, the kind of care that we would all want for our parents and grandparents. And we recognise that to do that we're going to have to be much more efficient in the way we deliver our services in the NHS. But it will also need extra money. We will need more doctors, more nurses, more healthcare assistants. And the Conservatives are saying for people who've worked hard all their lives we want to make sure they have the security of knowing the NHS is going to be there when they need it. And because we will deliver a strong economy, uh, we are able to make this very important financial commitment today. But how can you make a financial pledge based on projections on the economy? And we all know all too painfully that these projections don't always pan out. Yes, but um, if you look at our track record, uh, we inherited an economy that was in a far, far worse state. Uh, it was contracting. We had the worst recession since the Second World War, uh, a deficit the size of Greece's. And, and despite all that pressure in this parliament, we've actually increased funding in real terms for the NHS by £7 billion a year. So we're saying we'll effectively do the same again over the next parliament um, when actually the economic situation has been uh, transformed. So we are comp But you're right to ask the question because the one thing that would threaten being able to put that money in is if we tore up an economic plan that's working. And Ed Miliband and Ed Balls want to tear up that economic plan. Uh, that's why Labour are only committing a third of the increase in funding that we're committing as Conservatives. We know we can deliver it but it does need that sensible economic plan. But we do know at least where the Labour Party is planning to get the money from, tax avoidance and mansion tax. I mean, that's, you know, we can see that in black and white rather than just hoping that money appears. Well, um, what they can't commit to is um, generating money from the NHS from a growing economy because they want to tear up economic plan and they know that uh, countries like Italy, Ireland, Greece, Portugal that didn't have a proper economic plan, that didn't tackle their deficit, ended up having to cut their health budget. Alistair Darling himself was planning to cut the health budget in his last budget in 2010 and uh, we stopped that and we put more money into the NHS. But let me give you just one very specific example as to why Labour will put less money into the NHS. Because they want to cut the deficit more slowly, over the course of the next Parliament, they will have to spend £5 billion more in debt interest. Now, that's £5 billion that can't be spent on more doctors and more nurses, uh, which is what we want to do for the NHS. We're talking about £8 billion a year by 2020. How quickly, with your projections, could you get us to that level of funding? Well, we... Um, We've done two things. Um, the first thing is that uh, the NHS has said that the gap is around eight billion and today we're committing that we will bridge that gap by the end of the parliament. But at the start of the parliament for the next year, which is the first year of that five year plan, they've said to us that they need an extra 1.7 billion pounds. And in the autumn statement, we actually committed to an extra two billion pounds. Um, but the reason we're doing this, I think it's important to uh, say, is that what we believe as Conservatives is these um, diseases of old age, dementia, uh, recovering from a stroke, um, coping with diabetes, they are pressures enough. We don't want people to be worrying that the NHS might be too stretched to actually look after them and give them the care they need. And that's why we want to give people the security that with a Conservative government, the NHS will be there for them. You've talked about making economies with, within the NHS. We know Simon Stevens has talked about needing this £8 billion a year extra by 2020. How, how do these two things work? How do we work out how much is just filling the gap that Simon Stevens says will exist and how much extra is going to be on top to provide additional services? Well, uh, what his plan says is that if we do nothing in the NHS, there'll actually be a funding gap of 30 billion because of 
these extra older people and the extra demand on the system. Um, but he reckons that uh, about two-thirds of that gap can be bridged by doing things more efficiently, uh, by having services closer to home, uh, by caring for people in their homes more effectively so that they don't need expensive hospital care. Um, but that a third of it will be needed for, with additional funding, which is where the, the £8 billion comes from. So it's not a blank cheque for the NHS. There are going to be some very difficult efficiencies that we will still need to find over the coming years. But I think uh, the NHS can be confident that the government is backing the NHS's own plan. The government wants to do what the NHS wants to do, which is to make sure that every single patient entering the system is getting the care we need. You know, we need to remember that we inherited uh, Midstaffs, Morecambe Bay, 21 hospitals we've had to put into special measures. Um, the exciting thing about today's news is we said we want the NHS to be the safest and most compassionate healthcare system in the world. Now we have the resources to finish that job. In terms of this extra funding, is that a cast iron guarantee that's going to be in your manifesto? It is. Um, and we are making that commitment and we're making it very clear just as we made a very strong commitment to protect the NHS budget in 2010 we delivered on that promise but but, but, if but, people but does that mean Mr Hunt that you're also making a cast iron guarantee that that money the, you know, this, this extra 8 billion a year will not come from cuts elsewhere well we've been very honest about the fact that we will need to make cuts in other government departments at a, but unlike this parliament where we've had to make cuts for five years, in the next parliament we'll only have to make cuts for two years um, at about the same rate as, as we have been doing over the course of this parliament. But if we stick to the plan uh, and we get the deficit under control, we then can start increasing public spending. And for Conservatives, you know, we want a strong and prosperous country, but it's prosperity with a purpose. And there is no purpose more important than making sure that we look after the older people in our society uh, with the care that we would all want for our own families and indeed for ourselves when the time comes. Jeremy Hunt, thank you.